In Karnataka, on the Deccan Plateau, lies a beautiful stretch of land, once called Dwar Samudra. For 300 years, this was the capital of the ancient Hoysala Empire. But in the 14th century, armies of the Delhi Sultans invaded and destroyed the city. Fortunately, some temples outside the capital, now the town of Halibiru, survived the plunder. Among them is Hoysaleswara Temple, beautiful, mysterious. Its stone sculptures and carvings have baffled experts with their detail and complexity. Its pillars have been built with such precision that they appear to have been made with modern machine tools. Yet Hoysaleswara is 900 years old. It was the time of the greatest of the Hoysala kings. He was first known as Bitti Deva and was a follower of the Jain faith. But he was greatly influenced by a Hindu philosopher, Ramanujacharya. The great sage convinced the Jain king to adopt new beliefs. And so, in the early 12th century, he converted to the Hindu Vaishnav sect. He also changed his name to Vishnu Vardhana. Under him, Hoysala became an independent Kannadiga empire. Hoysaleswara temple is almost halfway between Bengaluru and Bangalore. It stands on the outskirts of Halibiru, near the city of Hassan. King Vishnu Vardhana was a patron of many great architectural projects. One of the finest is the temple of Hoysaleswara. Hoysaleswara has two identical chambers that stand side by side. One for Vishnu Vardhana and the other for his queen, Shantala Devi. Vishnu Vardhana was believed to be more than a warrior king. He was an intellectual under whom literature and the arts flourished. Queen Shantala was known to be an accomplished dancer. The Hoysaleswara temple is dedicated to her as much as it is to her husband. The building is raised on an elevated platform. Upon this platform are 12 carved stone layers. No cement or mortar is used to bind these layers. They are made of interlocking stones a clever technique used almost a millennia ago. It is not clear how the builders conceptualized and drafted the temple's building plan. Could they have experimented with wooden blocks or scaled models? No records for any blueprints have ever been found. The interlocking stone building techniques they adopted not only impressed the king, but have stood the test of time. Almost a thousand years later, the temple still stands strong. Hundreds of exquisite sculptures adorn the exterior walls, depicting scenes of life in those times, as well as from stories in Hindu mythology. Hoysaleswara is a Shaivite temple, yet it makes place for Vishnu and other Hindu deities. The carving is on soapstone, that is soft when quarried and hardens with time. This allowed the artisans to create shapes of incredible detail. But inside, the craftsmanship is simply jaw-dropping. In the dim interiors stand statues of Shiva, the destroyer, each carved from single blocks of stone. The sculptural details defy logic. Skulls adorn Shiva's crown, each just about an inch wide, yet mysteriously, the inside of these tiny spheres have been perfectly hollowed out, allowing light to pass from the eye holes to the mouth 
through to the ears. How were these tiny spaces made hollow using hand tools a thousand years ago? The questions don't end here. The Hoysa Lesura pillars, made from singular blocks of stone, are an enigma. Their perfect circular grooves indicate that they have not been made with chisel and hammer. Experts agree that these were possibly made by a machine tool called a lathe. Lathes are machines that turn an object on a fixed axis of rotation. Pressure can then be applied to it to create a symmetrical shape or pattern. In today's times, lathes are an integral part of most industries. But how did ancient Indians rotate huge pieces of stone? What machine did they use? To believe that a Hoysala temple was built with something inferior to the lathe, because lathe is the best tool available today, I think would be kind of undermining the human mind. To think that what we know today is the ultimate in the journey of the human mind, and something else different didn't exist, that would be quite the opposite of the cleverness of the human mind. There are no conclusive explanations. Theories abound. Some go so far to suggest that this is not the work of humans at all. Hoysaleswara remains one of Southern India's finest architectural marvels.